Hey, friends. Oh, <clears throat> well, I, um, today is the first day of, in, of this trip that I have not been kind of swamped, that we have not all been swamped in family activities. Of course, we're still essentially hanging out with family, but it's a little more mellow and it's a little more just of our own, of our own volition, of our own, you know, according to our own rhythm. And something that has been kind of, I can't tell if it's gnawing at me or looking for expression, but I've found myself reconnecting with the realization that I've, that I've had several times, and I've probably even at some point, maybe a while back on this post spoken about it, but, but there's a, there's a thing that I have noticed in the kind of meta context of doing inner work, of doing spiritual work, of observing our ego and then observing our authentic self. Um, however we define those things, I mean, I define them as, you know, the ego is essentially the compulsive programmed part of us and the, our authentic self is the the substrate of consciousness, the, 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 the essence of who we are. And we're always carrying an ego. It's not that we ever aren't going to carry an ego. As long as we're in the world, there's going to be a body that has to perform biological functions automatically. And our mind is going to be a human mental machine that does what our brains and minds do. So it's not that we're not gonna be carrying that ego, but, but the relationship between the two, between the ego and this authentic self, where we really have greater and greater degrees of freedom, the more we identify with our, with our essence and with the consciousness that animates everything, including our ego, um, the more, the, the greater degree of freedom we have, not just over our own ego, but also in the world, over, over our circumstances, and ultimately, you know, the power to create the kind of world we want to live in. And as I observe this, as I, as I kind of work with this, both in myself and with um, you know, clients and students very explicitly, <laughs> friends and family members probably usually less explicitly, but I kind of feel like it's, it's on, it's an on, it's just kind of the way I'm made that I'm always on some level operating on that, out of that, um, impulse to engage in the world in that way, the more I do it, the more I kind of clock that even when we're in our ego, we're still contributing and we are still in a way in a weird way there's almost no difference. In a weird way, there's n we are no less part of creating the universe than we are if we're completely enlightened and free. And that, you know, it's kind of like, it's so, even as I say it, I'm like, well, yeah, that seems kind of obvious, but also as we do the work, it starts to really not seem obvious. It's, it, it's almost one of these things that can become obscured by our sense of, oh, I'm doing the work and therefore I'm transcending my ego and therefore I'm doing more somehow in 
some undefined way than I am when I'm just in my ego. But, um, but that's almost like another ego construct. It's almost like another ego layer because the ego is consistently, constantly, and never endingly trying to throw a net around whatever it has ever seen. The ego's job and the, and the job of the mind is to consistently grab a hold of the known universe and, and, and within that known universe, give ourselves the best chance of survival, the best chance of thriving, the best chance of success, etc., etc. All the things that the ego wants, all the things that the ego thinks we need, Again, because the ego is kind of an automatic process. The ego doesn't, if the ego got programmed that having $10 billion is the only way to be set, be safe, well, then the ego is going to go about doing that forever until it, until it questions, until we question, until we're able to change that belief. And, you know, there might be many ways in which that belief serves us and in which we, there might even be ways in which our authentic self would say, oh, I'm fine with this. I'm fine with these, I'm fine with this work because you know what, it means that I'm gonna have the capacity to do X or whatever, right? It's none, nothing is um, like on limits or off limits when it comes to this work. There's no such thing as doing the work right or doing the work wrong. We know, we ourselves know whether we're in alignment with ourselves, in integrity with ourselves, or whether we're not. And, and I think that's where this kind of dichotomy that I'm talking about comes in, because as we do the work, we get a better and better sense of what it feels like to be in alignment and, a, and, and being out of alignment feels more and more uncomfortable. It's more and more, it's just more and more evident. We notice it. It's right there in our immediate experience. Because why? Because it's juxtaposed with we have been increasingly in alignment. We're bringing ourselves into alignment more and more and more. We'll be fall out of alignment and all of a sudden we have a really nearby reference point for that experience. And so you can, we can live lives completely out of alignment for a long time. And it's uncomfortable and it's stressful and there's an accumulated sense of frustration and, and, and tension and stress and there's all kinds of things that, that are not gonna feel good, but we're not gonna be aware that it's because we're not in alignment or, we, or we're only kind of like cloudily aware of that. But once we start really getting, you know, once we've tasted that, once we have that sense of this is what I naturally am compelled to do, then anything else starts to be less and less tolerable. And I think in my case, met a guy yesterday who's fantastically, um, he runs a nonprofit out here and it's a, a, just a beautiful organization with an incredible, um, an incredibly thoughtful approach to making change in the world. And I, I, I think I, <clears throat> I recognized some of my own enthusiasm in his way of thinking and just in the way that his organization seems to work and there's a lot that kind of showed up for me where I was like this this is the water that I swim in he, he's done a bunch of training in systems thinking and um, how you create you know collaboration instead of competition is actually a, a relatively complex, that's, that has to be a relatively complex structure of 
of um, how you set up those relationships and how you set up the, the get, get all the right parts moving the right way and all the right people in the right rooms and, and, and so another because of course many many of us if we're if we're thinking about you know collaborate if you're thinking about oh, how can we help the world be a better place well collaboration instead of competition great but that doesn't give us necessarily any of the tools or put any of the obstacles to that out on the table. I've done a lot of work in collaborative settings and I and I have I actually consider myself pretty well versed in collaborative thinking and collaborative work because I've just been doing it for a long time. And one of my frustrations is that if it's not structured well, collaboration is actually as ineffective or in many cases more ineffective than competition it's it doesn't it just the fact that we're like ostensibly pooling our energy pooling our resources all pulling in the same direction as opposed to fighting that doesn't always work unless there are certain underlying things in place and then unless there are certain resources in place and unless there are certain goals and visioning work in place and so as i as i got into um I realize I'm kind of on a tangent from where I started in this post, but I'm talking about something that really resonated with me and that that really gives me some food for thought about uh, how, I, how I do my work and, and what it is I want to create next. And, and, and out of that, you know, back to kind of what I was saying a moment ago about, you know, even when I've been in my ego, I've still been taking steps towards that. Even when I've been blind to where I'm going, I'm still taking steps in that direction. And the, the, it gives us peace of mind to become conscious. It gives us ease of being and it gives us um, clarity and inspiration and it gives us a sense of sort of the word I'm looking for like maybe peace of mind is what I was trying to say it, it, it gives it gives us a sense of confidence that oh I'm tr I'm going in the right direction I, I know where I'm going it's, it's easier to be confident when we know where we're going than when we don't but even when we don't have that clarity even when we don't have that consciousness it's my experience that our ego is leading us there's, there, it's like there's a higher part of us that's hardly even conscious or it's like this proto-consciousness that's growing, that's infusing us even as we move on auto, on, uh, seemingly on autopilot. And it just brings me to the conclusion that we're all, we are all contributors. We are all in this together. We're all moving together, whether we know it or not. And I think one of the biggest jobs we can take on right now in this day and age with so much to tackle as a species is to become as conscious of it as we can so that we realize we're not in conflict. We realize we're not actually at odds about most things. There are things we are in conflict about, but those things are by and large surmountable if we could get get our heads together about the, about the rest of them. So. That was a post that started one place and really kind of fractaled its way out into a lot of other thoughts. But thanks for watching. Much love. I appreciate you. I, um, yeah. Days like today are a great example. I don't know that, I don't know that these insights are, are in my psyche. I don't know that they're there until I start speaking and then all of a sudden, wham. I get slammed with, oh, I think maybe I know what the next step of my life is. <laughs> wow, glad I just started moving my mouth. And you, <laughs> dear friends, are the reason why I do it. So, thank you. Have a great day. I'll see you tomorrow.